How does stage lighting work? Hi, I'm David Henry from LearnStageLighting.com and in this video we're going to talk about the basics of how you get the stage light like this to turn on and work. Um, because ultimately if you're going to be using lighting, whether it's a band, context, church, theater, DJ, whatever context you're in, whether you're in a portable setup, a permanent installation, or just working with somebody else's gear, it's important to grasp the basics of how DMX works and how to control a light so that if you have problems, if you need to troubleshoot something, if you want to add to a system later, or maybe you're just curious, knowing how lights work and having a basic understanding of how DMX gets to the lights and how they're controlled is essential. In fact, it'll even help you if you're simply programming on a console or on a computer that's already set up. It's going to help you understand what the lights are looking for so that you can get a better grasp as to how to control it. Ultimately, DMX is very simple. It's what we call a broadcast type signal. Think about FM radio or TV that broadcasts over the airwaves. The lighting console, which could be a actual console, it could be a piece of software, it could be a phone app or tablet with a box, um, it could be a wall panel. The console, as I'm going to call it, can send out DMX information called channels to your lights. Ultimately, that's how they're controlled. Now, there's a couple key things that have to happen in order for your light to work. The first is the physical. You've got to connect the DMX from your console or software, again, maybe a box, maybe a wall panel, whatever, through a DMX cable, which is different than a microphone cable, to the back of your light, where You'll commonly see, if we hold it right side up, your DMX input and output. Now, DMX works in what we call a bus topology. It's like a highway, where the signal drives by, and it comes in and out of the light as it passes to the next one. If this light is not powered on and I hook DMX through it, it still passes the signal through. Lights are then daisy chain, as we call it, where you go from the console, plug into the first light, out of the first light to the second, etc., etc. But, and this is a pretty key distinction that a lot of people uh, who are new to this miss out, DMX, the, the order that you wire things in, completely does not matter and does not affect the program. You can come out of the console and go to the tenth light and then the first and the second and the third and have them respond in order the way that you desire. How does that happen? Well, DMX works really simply. When you have a DMX cable that's a 3 or a 5 pin XLR type cable, it can carry one universe of DMX data. That's up to 512 channels. Now, a channel is a particular set of information from 0 to 255 about a particular aspect of the light. Often we call these parameters. This may be intensity, it could be part of a color system like red, green, blue, or CMY, um, cyan, magenta, yellow. This could be pan or tilt. It could be half of any of those attributes as well. Sometimes attributes take two channels. Okay, so the console sends out DMX channels. How does it know what to send out? Well, the first thing we do when we set up a console is we patch our lights. We tell the console, most often or the software, um, except with very simple um, old school style consoles, we, we tell it what lights we have and what mode we wish to run those lights in. And if you want more on modes, check out this video. And then we patch it. We tell the console, place it at a DMX address, or we tell the console, place it at this DMX address. Either way, the console patches the light, and now it's assigned the DMX addresses that it's outputting to that light and the attributes that that light has. Then, as we mentioned before, DMX comes out of the back of the console, out of a USB box, out of a networked device. Um, these are all options. And it travels through a DMX cable most often, though it can technically go direct over the network with some fixtures. And it goes to your light. Then, your light must be set, this is the broadcast part, must be set to the same DMX address 
and mode, as you've set it in the patch of the console. If both the DMX address and the mode do not match, then you may get no control, you may get partial control, you may get wrong control of the light. Okay, so these are important. And this is how the light knows what to respond to. Essentially, it's listening to the whole DMX universe, it sees everything that's going on, and it only listens to the channels that it's set to. The address is the starting point of those channels. Multiple lights can be set to the same address if desired, though you won't get individual control over them. Um, ultimately, uh, if you can address everything individually, do, but if you run out of space on your console, it's understandable. At the end of the day, DMX is pretty simple. Sure, if we're adding onto a system, we can get into using a DMX splitter, which is a box that repeats the DMX over and over again. We can get into network-based protocols like ArtNet and SACN, and there's more on that here. But in its simplest form, DMX is a simple broadcast setup where your console sends out information and lights receive that information. There's no complicated pairing or anything like this, and DMX is very, very reliable. That's why we still use it. So, if you've enjoyed this video, maybe you're new to lighting, maybe you're just starting with DMX lights and, and you want to get going with your first lighting setup, then I invite you to check out my free guide over at LearnStageLighting.com. Inside this guide, we're going to show you the steps to get started with lighting in your specific context, whether that be band, whether it be church, DJ, theater, lighting, we've got them all. Okay, check out that free guide at learnstagelighting.com here. And if you like this video, you want to learn more about lighting, hit subscribe. And if you did like the video, hit like. Why not? Helps the video, helps the channel, and makes you happier in the process. Awesome. More on this month and in this playlist, if you're hitting this future, we're going to go deeper into this stuff, so be sure you're subscribed. We'll see you guys next. Thanks.